Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness, there is no God but Allah who came to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. I bear witness that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is indeed the exalted Christ. I furthermore need bear witness that the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan is our divine reminder, leader, teacher, and guide, the Messiah of the day. I greet you all in the nation, greeted words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language, Assalamu alaikum. All praises are due to Allah. On behalf of Brother Albert Muhammad and the Let Us Make Man family, as always, family, we continuously thank you for your support. We thank you for taking a few moments of your time to watch the videos and read our posts, supporting our calls, our efforts, and the plight of the black community. We can never thank you enough. I'm going to do the best I can to take little of your time as possible in regards to this particular session that we want to do. Um, basically, we titled this Surviving Diddy Now or The Crucifixion of Sean Combs. Um, let me start by saying this. Now, by no means do I, uh, am I doing this because, you know, I know uh, Puffy or Sean Combs, Brother Love, brother, brother Love, you know, whatever, you know, whatever description the brother goes by, or am I trying to um, impress anyone in regards to this particular session? Um, but I want to give a little light into the brief, uh, a little briefing in regards to the controversies and the allegations that our brother is dealing with. And um, I just feel like it's, a, it's, a, it, it's really a sad reality because at the end of the day, you know, it appears that we have this stigma in our in our in our uh, culture to bring each other as far down as possible um uh, oftentimes a lot of this stuff is based on allegations am i the one who say am i the one to say who's wrong or who's right or whatever the case may be um but when you look at the brother you know in regards to the nature of the line of work the brothers and in, in, in the type of business the brothers and um, you would have to you would want to say or think to give some sort of uh, benefit of the doubt in general before we cast judgments or crucify each other castrate each other throw each other under the bus do I know Puffy do I know Diddy nah what kind of person he is nah but you know at the end of the day you know this just seems like a revolving door now when it comes to our people in regards to uh, those those so so called the successful elite in the entertainment business and and in the in the um in the business of of uh, entertainment as I said and things of that nature um, from sports and play to whatever the case may be as soon as one of us for whatever reasons uh, fall or get caught up in some sort of scandal or some sort of, um, you know, gossip, the gossip rumor, gossip mill, it just goes and goes and goes and goes. But when you watch what's really going on and you ask yourself why, you know what I'm saying? Um, why are we so adamant and so vicious in our attacks against each other? Rather, the, tr the stories are true or not. That's between the man and the God that he bear witness to or whatever the case may be. And we always talk about the negative side of an individual and the dark side of an individual. And a lot of it be based on gossip and rumor mill. It's not like we really know Puff Daddy, Sean uh, Combs or, or, or Diddy or whatever the case may be, you know. But to sit here and just, you know, to see this revolving door constantly going, constantly going and constantly going um, it's just it's just a sad reality, family, and we have to at some point come to grips with our perception of each other and what we do. Because listen to this. When you watch what's really going on with this brother right now, you don't see many Caucasians attacking this brother at all in the way that we do, in the sense of how we seek to destroy each other. So when you wrong, you wrong. Everyone should answer to their wrong. If they do wrong, they have to deal with the wrong that they done, whatever the wrong that they done. But let me ask you a question. Now, before I get into this and, and get too deep into this, because I'm not really going to go too far with this. It's just a matter of just bringing some sort of uh, consciousness to the situation. 
you find a lot of the individuals that this brother may have dealt with from the notorious big Mary J. Usher and the countless individuals that the brother may have dealt with. And we find for some apparent reason in this entertainment business, it just seems just like it's bad boy entertainment and death world records that really is held accountable for the failures of others. Now, if, if, if you sign a contract to some sort of agreement, regardless to what the agreement is, it could be your AT&T bill. It could be your, um, whatever, your, whatever you got going on, you sign a contract, you, you, you say, you, you sign off in terms of an agreement, right? All right. So in when you look at um, the music industry and the things that goes on in there, I'm not in it. So I couldn't really tell you I'm not behind the scenes and all this other stuff. I can't get on no podcasts and tell you about the, the, the dark side of the industry and what goes on X, Y, Z. I'm not deep into that like that. But at the end of the day, when you sign a contract, if you have a job, you work for someone other than yourself and you go apply for a job. You apply for the job, you get the employment. They give you the policies and procedures of the company to the game. They give you all of that, right? So once you get that and agree with that, the rest is that. In some companies you go work for, you get what they call a benefit package. The benefit package may consist of medical care X, Y, Z. So you allowed all that while you're working with the company, and the company will give you a certain percent of medical coverage X, Y, Z while you're working with the company. But... The minute that you are no longer working with the company, it doesn't take them less than 90 days to dis, you know, um, discontinue the agreement with you in terms of your benefit package and X, Y, Z. And depending on how long you're with the company, you might get a service, a service pay or something like that. But they don't hold you for the next two or three years on the uh, benefit package that you agreed upon. Would you agree or not? Right. Okay. So why is it that we feel like the individuals that may have signed to Bad Boy Entertainment who had made a deal at some point in time and God knows what the extent of the deal was, right? But yet in all, at the end of the day, when the deal is no longer valid and if you part ways, why do we feel like this individual record label or entertainment business, uh, organization owes us more? That we should be getting more when you don't do that to the Caucasian. When you lead eight jobs and eight companies, you move on to the next. You let it go, right? But not in this game. So in this game, we feel like uh, our people, because they have became successful, they should do more. But you don't say that to the corporation that may have uh, let you go from um, the company that you may have been working for. And now you they'll have no obligation to you at all, Right? And so when it comes to this type of business, we feel, our people feel that, okay, well, I worked for Sean Combs. I worked for Bad Boys. I did this when I was with Bad Boys. I did this when I was with Bad Boys. Listen to the language when I was, past tense, right? So I'm no longer with Bad Boy Entertainment. So now Bad Boy Entertainment should pay me this or they should take care of me for the next. That's crazy. And it's, it's a sad reality because when the rumor mills get and all we got the modern day podcasters and everybody gets on a podcast and begin to slander and gossip, whether it's true or not remains to be seen. But in the in this in the case with this brother, I don't have a clue. I don't know what's going on with the situation. There was a case recently that they obviously settled out. The next day, and everybody went ballistics, assuming that, uh, well, 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 he settled. She went to court this day, and he settled out the next day, as if there was no negotiation going on long before the court procedure. We would never know that, and that's not even the issue. The sad part about it is, some of us are so damn nosy that we have nothing to do. The scripture says, "Idle times is the devil's workshop." So when we have nothing to do, we sit and we sift and we pick and we sift and we pick and we find. We look for as much negative negativity as possible that we can find on each other to throw each other under the bus. Now, the brother has become a multimillionaire. Let's see Sean Love Combs, born Sean John Combs, November the 4th, 1969, also known by his stage names Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, or Diddy at that point in time. And it's an American rapper, singer, record producer, record executive, and actor. Born in Harlem, Combs worked as a talent director at Uptown Records before founding 
his own record label, Bad Boy Entertainment. So the brother started from the bottom. Damn, we beat the hell out of each other. The brother's born in 69, worked at Uptown Records, started from the bottom before he got to where he got to in regards to Bad Boy Entertainment. I mean, pardon me, Bad Boy Records. In 1993, Combs has produced and cultivated artists such as the Notorious Big, B.I.G., Mary J. Blige, and Usher. So now, you know, you know, we, we tend to beat up each other, man. I mean, to the fifth power, but we never look at what individuals absolutely actually does. Same thing with Suge Knight in so many ways. He, it is what it is, but when you, you can focus on all the negative if you want to, but there's a lot of positive in some of the work that these brothers did. And the minute that, that, that the opportunity comes to focus and dwell on the negative is what we do. We have, we have a history of doing just that. We will focus and dwell on the negative as opposed to any kind of positive. Now, why would we want to see this brother thrown and destroyed? There's many of us laying low like vipers, like snakes, like, 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 like critters, waiting to see this brother destroyed, waiting to see everything that the brother established uh, destroyed, waiting to see his children suffer, waiting to see his family suffer. We come up with all kinds of foolishness and garbage to attack each other, right? But yet in all, we expect these men, uh, Puffy and all the rest of these guys that actually made it, Jay-Z and these, you, you still got individuals holding Jay-Z accountable for stuff that he no longer should be held accountable for. If he has paved the way and set, pardon me, and helped set and paved the way, then it's on an individual what they do with the opportunity that they get. Either you agree or you disagree. I'm not here trying to defend Puff Daddy, Sean Combs. I don't know the brother at all. I've seen the brother quite a few times, mainly at the Million Man March. When the Million Man March was taking place, I actually had the opportunity to be in the brother's present in the party they threw in 95, Bad Boy Entertainment, Tupac Shakur, all of them was there. I happened to be in the presence at that time, and it was always business. That's what I saw. I can't get caught up into what other people think about. Why are we in someone's bedroom? Damn, this is what kills me. Why do we stay as grown men, particularly, I'm talking to grown men, why in the hell would we be worried about who someone else is sleeping with? Rather than sleeping with a man or a woman, we'll do anything Thing to destroy each other and come up with all, cause, all sorts of room, uh, gossip and slander to throw somebody under the bus. If that is what interests someone and entertains someone, then that's on them and whoever they believe, uh, whatever God they believe in. But I'm not concerned about who's in Puffy bedroom, or who's in his uh, closet, or who's he, or who's he dating, or who's not dating. That man should have a life, and because he's an entertainer, we want to rob the man of his life. So now we want to see the man destroyed. We could have saved R. Kelly if we gave a damn. But we didn't give a damn about R. Kelly because we enjoy. When I say we, I mean in those who are, are felt that way. I didn't feel that my, 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 I don't feel that way personally. But I'm just saying collectively, we probably could have saved R. Kelly from the injustices that he served. What do you mean by injustices, brother? He's guilty. Guilty of what? He's guilty of this. He's guilty of that. Nah, brother. They, they, that man is locked up because of the wickedness of this enemy that we deal with. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan taught us that we cannot fathom how wicked these people really are. Do you think that R. Kelly is in prison because they give a damn about the few black women that made the complaints? Hell no, that's not why R. Kelly is in prison and it's going to be there for an extensive period of time. He's in prison because they decided that they want to hit him with laws that was actually created for their own people. I'm talking about the RICO laws and all this other stuff that they came up with, which had nothing to do with the, the original reason why the brother was actually even going court. But that's neither here to say. So now we have another brother on the, on the edge right now, meaning Sean Puffy Cone. And we want to see the man go to prison. We want to see the man destroyed after he have done a lot. This man done a lot. And I know that he done a lot because he has been around the nation of Islam. He has been around the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and members of the nation of Islam receiving guidance and spiritual information. So we can't just... just 
that we shouldn't just want to destroy each other every damn chance we get. Once again, brother, I'm not here trying to uh, defend Sean Puffy Combs. I don't know the brother like that. Ain't nobody told me, tap me in and say, brother, do this. Puffy gonna like this. Puffy don't know nothing about me and probably wouldn't give a damn either way. But at the end of the day, we deal with freedom, justice, and equality. Islam is based on freedom, justice, and equality. And then so in, in, in this case, if the brother is wrong for any reason, why can't we be beneficent and merciful? Many of us claim we believe in some God. We believe in Jesus. We believe in Moses. We believe in Jah. We believe in Muhammad and all this other stuff. Well, if God is beneficent and merciful, if God is all forgiven, then why we have a problem with being beneficent and merciful? Why we have a problem with being all forgiven? Because we're really not connected with no God, man. There's no way in the hell we could be connected with a God and have so much hatred and bitterness and animosity in ourselves for people we don't even know. People we don't even know. He settled out with the sister for whatever reason. I'm not even following that case because I really don't know what the hell went on between the brother and the sister that he just settled the case with. It is what it is. Money, power, and respect. We already know what the game is based on. We already know a lot what the business is about. You never, and I stand to be corrected, so if I'm in error with what I'm about to say, I stand to be corrected. But you never really hear white people attacking each other like we do. You know, you don't get uh, um, some of the uh, white artists and football players and uh, basketball players, baseball players who, who are guilty of some heinous crimes and heinous rape charges and molestation. They don't beat up each other like that. No, sir, brother. You don't see them going at the Stallone or, or anybody that they know is scandalous and full of drama. They don't be on social media. They don't go on the radio stations. They don't create podcasts and throw each other. We do that to each other. If Sean Puffy Cone deserved to be in jail, a lot of God will see that happen. I don't, I fast and pray, Brother Albert Muhammad, I fast and pray that Allah continue to protect Sean Puffy Cone. That man got children, man. That man got a goddamn family. I'm getting a little frustrated because we so goddamn ignorant. As a people, man. And if the man is wrong, then let him deal with what, let, let his wrong, you know, let him deal with his wrong, brothers and sisters. But if the man, if we say, those of us who profess some sort of God, and those of us to profess, who profess to be so self-righteous, then once again, why don't we show compassion to our people? Do, do you think that, they give a damn about all this scandal. Now, here's a brother who has made it, who has, who has become successful in his line of work, meaning Puffy. He has become successful in his line of work. And so because he has become successful in his line of work and started out from the bottom working for Uptown Records, doing whatever he had to do before he got fired and did not stop. The brother created Bad Boy Records. And when Suge Knight and them went, well, actually, Suge Knight made the ludicrous, ludicrous statement. He didn't come back at them. He decided to say it was uh, Death Row Records that inspired him to push for Bad Boy Records. Now, that's just showing humility. And I don't think the man would have said something like that if he really didn't mean it. I mean, it's, I mean sometimes we have to give honor and respect where it's due. But we fight and bicker. We are multi-millionaires at this point. Young black men and women who are becoming multi-millionaires millionaires, do not see the signs of the God saying that we're, we're being raised up out of that triple state of darkness. We're being raised into a higher level of consciousness. All we need is guidance. And this man here, from what I understand, and I've actually been, again, in the brother's presence, I never had a conversation with Sean Combs or anything like that. I was on security. I had a job to do. I did my job. I kept it moving, brother. I have time to see and waste about what the next man is doing, who the next man is sleeping. Brothers are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on social media, on platforms to, to destroy their own people. And while our open enemy just sit back like this and enjoy the show. 
So now they don't have to do it. Back in the day, they went all above and beyond to destroy anything that black people was trying to do. From all these riots and rallies and, and, and all these other in incidents that was taking place when black people was showing great prominence and great success, you had these Caucasians and organizations attacking our people and destroying. Now they don't have to do it because we do it now. We do it to ourselves. We would rather see this man here, Sean Puffy Combs or Diddy, Brother Love, XYZ. I saw an interview and a brother was basically like, you know, I, I really don't understand it, man. Brother Love, show some love. Brother Love, show some love. Brother Love, or if you wouldn't have got caught up, you wouldn't have been calling on Brother Love to show some love. Brother Love, see, we want to play gangster. We want to play all of this, but you playing in the hands of the enemy, man. And then the minute we get caught up, what do we do? We want to turn cold. We want to throw up, throw other people under the bus. So now the scandals is coming out to attack Sean Puffy Combs throw that brother under the bus, right? See him incarcerated, see everything that he built, he worked on, taken away from him, and 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 all this other, pardon me, all this other, um, I was getting a message, I do apologize, all this other foolishness that, that we have going on. But I just say, man, it's just a sad reality, brothers and sisters, and, you know, we... We as a people, man, we we have we have to do better um, in our in our in our thought patterns and our visions. Brother Dale Dixon said Casey lied and ruined his career. See, like you know, thank you, Brother Dale, for that comment, man. But you know, this is a part of us being gullible and being acceptable to anything that comes down the pipe. It only takes one. And remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in the Quran and even in the Bible, the story of Jezebel, right? And Deliah, Samson and Deliah. Did you think that was a folk tale when they were, they were trying to teach us of what was to come? Jezebel is real. I gave you the story on Jezebel in a video. Deliah is no joke. Deliah is a real live human being. It's a real live mindset. It's a real it's a real live motives and intentions. And so we have to be careful when we enter the presence of Deliah because you never know when Deliah is present. You see this beautiful specimen uh the body position and you we go for it, man. We go all out. When it comes to being gullible, when Deliah is present. See, Deliah is sent in to destroy the strong of us. We don't think nothing about it because we millionaires. We got unlimited amount of cash flow and we can do whatever we want to do. And as soon as Deliah comes in, brother, she has a mission already. She beautiful. I mean, every, she has everything going for herself. And unfortunately, many of our brothers suffer. We suffer under the hands of Deliah. And so they sent in another Deliah. Now Puffy has to settle out, right? R. Kelly did all he could do. But it got, it got so bad. And, and let me tell you something, bro. Deliah, Dream Hampton, the individual that created the mindset, Surviving R. Kelly. Listen to that title surviving somebody when you talk about surviving somebody you put a mindset in the world that this is the worst person on the planet so they pitch it they they pump this brother r kelly to be the worst person on the planet and it was easy for the enemy to come right in smooth the prosecutors the judges the lawyers to come right in real smooth and actually take full advantage of our dissatisfaction with each other. Yes, sir, brother, there are a lot of freedom brothers, mystical and all of them. This, this, is, this is just something that we have to teach our young people in the industry, right? Kodak Black, 
all these young brothers that we make mockery of because they're dealing with the elements that shaitan put in it the drugs the women the money the jewelry the diamond the vehicles all this stuff all that stuff is a plan by the enemy in himself and when you take a young individual and you give them access to unlimited cash flow right they're not going to really be thinking about what you and I are talking about unless they're sitting in somebody's prison cell right waiting to be free and they may never really see that freedom again based on the lack of knowledge our people suffer for the lack of knowledge. My sister says 75% of the work is with the woman, 100%. And this is why we have to really focus on that divine woman when we come in to her presence and separate her from Deliah. Because Deliah will study like that great 75% or that woman that knows the 75% of the work is with her. But Deliah was studied at just so that she could manipulate the situation in the minds of our men, our brothers and sisters. Surviving Diddy, next thing you know, we will be speaking. We will be speaking in regards to how to help Sean Puffy Cone survive this current state that the brother's in. Right? And so, again, I'm not here trying to defend Puffy or Diddy, Brother Love, P. Diddy, you know, whatever y'all call the brother, whatever he call himself. I'm just speaking to a reality, man, that this is a sad reality that we consistently come at each other to destroy each other. And we help the open enemy of ours destroy our people because the enemy sits back in the cut. And, and say we have watched this man, Sean Combs, for a long time. Now it's time to get rid of him. He's been around too long. I even saw some comments posted. Oh, yeah, it's Diddy time. Diddy, it's Diddy turn. He has to get his turn. He's ex Why would we feel like that, man? Why would even if in any errors brother may have had, any mistakes brother may have had, why wouldn't we allow brother to vindicate himself? We allow white folks to do it all the time. We allow the red man to do it, the blue man to do it, the brown man to do it. And we help them vindicate themselves and redeem themselves. This is the price of redemption that we're talking about. Why wouldn't we allow Sean Puffy Cone the opportunity to redeem himself? Who's the next woman that's going to come up and said, I saw an article where one of his associates now are facing the same allegations as he faced. So do you not understand? And these women don't understand. Well, of course they don't give a damn either way. Because the bag come to them. The check come to them. So these lawyers can manipulate the system. And continue to, to keep our people in the dark. Then these women will continue to come out and surface. And make allegations. And this is why the young artists. As Tupac was given a message to the young artists, is, is to study our past. So as they're coming up, they don't make the same mistakes. They don't keep the same company. They have to watch the people that's in their surroundings. To watch the people that's in your camp. Watch the one that says that they have your best interest at hand. And in reality... It's highly questionable. My brother here, Jerry Peterson, or Patterson, that's my brother. Thank you, man. He says, peace, it is the duty of those that know the truth to educate and teach those that don't. Absolutely true, 100%. That's the duty of a civilized person is to teach the uncivilized. But the key in that is the uncivilized has to be willing and open to learn and listen. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is to know, look, listen, learn, and observe. Also to respect. So our people have to be willing to absorb and intake the knowledge so that way they cannot, they won't find themselves Trapped in the belly of the beast. I don't want to see nothing happen to the brother, Sean Puffy Combs. And whatever he has done in his past, 
Allow that man to be vindicated. Get off that man back. I love 50 Cent. I think 50 Cent is an intelligent brother. But to do what you're doing to the brother, that's wrong, man. Damn, are you that are you that stubborn that you just won't back off your own people, man? You're not doing that to the Jews. I love your work, man. I love your talent, man. But brother, come on, 50. You can back off that man. It, regardless to what your beef is, man, just remember this. None of us wouldn't be where we are if not for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the teachers of the nation of Islam. You could take it or let it alone, brother. Believe you me when I tell you. So for to see our own people badger and throw each other under the bus and think it's a joke, it's not a joke, man. It's not a joke, 50. It's really not a joke. Back up off that man. You see the pressure on? You see what's happening? Why would you want to destroy your own people? Why not? Why you not do why, why you not coming at the Jews? Why you not coming at those who manipulate our community on a day-to-day -day basis? Why you not coming at those who have turned our community into a cash app? Why you don't come at them? I'm gonna tell you why, because you know. You open your mouth to the left of them, asking the can and humble them down. Beautiful brother, talented brother. Jews humble them down. And see, you fear the devil. The God asked, why does we fear the devil now that he's a big man? Because the devil taught us how to eat the wrong foods. What's that? Christian sanctity. Because it's, a, it's crazy as hell to think that God would be, or Jesus would be coming back. Did Jesus not tell you that I must leave so that the comforter could come? That means I'm not coming back. So why would you be still sitting here talking about Jesus is coming back? But that's neither here or say. What I'm saying, though, brothers and sisters, we have to get behind each other. Again, I'm not sitting here trying to advocate for Sean Puffy Cone. I don't know the brother. I never met the brother. Not even interested in it. I'm doing this out of love here. Whenever you see me log into this program, I don't get paid for this. Don't nobody call me up. I said, like Brother Albert. Yes, sir, brother. This will be a beautiful topic. I got to move on the thoughts of the God. I can't move on the thoughts of somebody else because if I try to move on the thoughts of somebody else, it's not going to be right. I move on the thoughts of the God. The thoughts of the God mean divine inspiration, justice to me. I'm just a little fella. I'm not no big fella. I don't claim to be nothing other than who I am. Just your little brother. That's all I that's all I am. That's all I strive to be. Just your little brother. I don't claim to no deity, no title. My teacher is the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. And this man, the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, has shown nothing but empathy, sympathy, and love to black people for over 60 something years. And you've never heard Farrakhan attack our people under any circumstances to the degree where we can't rebuild he gave us the price of redemption so there's a price to be redeemed man but we can't just throw puffy under the bus the sister came she got the bag that she wants she happy she settled out it wasn't no one day thing you'd be foolish to think that that just happened in one day nah the attorneys did their job so she settled out she got what she wants she moved on but to throw another brother under the bus y'all don't do that to white people y'all don't do that to the corporate Corporations of slick malt liquor. You don't do that to the corporation of Nike. You don't do that to the corporation of uh, um, Miller or Budweiser. You don't do none of that to none of those folks who don't give a damn about you. But they product is all up in your community. Brother came up with a beautiful idea called Syrah. And then, you know, he did what he did. I don't agree with it, but I, who am I? I that's, just, that's just the way of the world. I don't drink fire water. I drink regular tea or something like that. But at, but at the end of the day, brothers, a talented brother, Combs' debut album, No Way Out, 1997, has been certified seven times platinum. The album was found, follow up with Forever, 1999. The saga continues, 2001. Press play, um, 2006. This brother got a history of talent, man. So why you want to see Puffy go go to prison? Why you want to see Puffy ruined, brought down to the trash? But he can where his children won't see him. That R. Kelly appeal for the for for the sake of being able to see his children. But we were so damn merciless and so heartless, and we are still merciless and heartless towards the brother. Right? I'm talking R. Kelly. I enjoy the brother talent. 
I, like I said, brothers and sisters, I'm not the one that being another grown man's damn bedroom. If somebody like men, or they like women, or if they like whatever they like, that's between them and their God. I wish we as grown ass folks stay out of grown folks business. See? And why would you want to go on your social media? I'll tell you why. Because you figure there's a chip in the bag that they're going to throw. So YouTube is going to give you a percent of nothing. Then you're going to go and throw your own. You don't see Jews doing that to each other. You don't see Spanish people really doing that to each other. You don't see the Irish really doing that to each other. You don't see the Colombians really doing that to each other. You don't see the uh, Italians doing that to each other. But black people in America, shit, anything they can do to get paid. TikTok. Anything they think can do to get paid to de defame themselves and belittle themselves is what they'll do. And this is a reality, man. This is something that we have to face, brother. So I'm just saying, man, you know, Sean uh, Puffy Combs surviving Diddy or the persecution of Sean Combs. I believe this is a persecution, man, of our brother, you know, and I fast and pray a lot the gods that they continue to watch over our brother and whatever comes out of it comes out of it brother but but to try to wish bad on somebody that goes to show how miserable our personal lives is literally like literally that you would sit there and want to see this man destroy everything that he worked on and built and some of the artists that make all these ludicrous comments bodyguards that go i mean come on man literally when, when You know, I, I was told a long time ago there was a captain that I had, and he said to me, he said, brother, do you think that every time somebody bring me something, I take what they say? No, sir, brother. He said, not only do I listen to what they say, but I listen to the motives of the individual. So you have to be clear and pay clear attention when somebody bring you news about somebody else. That's gossip, man. We should have grown out of that by now. And if the brother made a mistake, you know what I mean? Whatever uh, whatever laws, if there's any that the brother may have broken, then let him deal with it. But don't wish the worst on my man or, or, or our own people when you don't do that to those who actually... Schwarzenegger became a damn governor. Schwarzenegger became a damn governor. The mo One of the most wickedest crackers out there. You went right behind it for those that supported that. And there's countless Caucasians and other ones that have violated the laws to the I forget the the basketball announcer who who did it was caught up in a sexual scandal and you know he was forgiven and he's still on um uh announcing basketball games and we have no problem. We enjoy the games. So we, we have to really be careful, family. Our self-hatred is, is horrible, brothers and sisters. It's horrible, brother. We hate each other that much to the degree where we want to see each other destroyed, literally. Want to see a brother come down from whatever platform we may think that he's on. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, brother, you know, this brother has helped a lot of people in his early lives. He was born in Harlem neighborhood of New York City on November 4th, 69. Raised in Mount Vernon, New York, his mother, Janice Combs, um, was a model and teacher's assistant. And his father, Melvin Combs, served in the U.S. Air Force and was an associate of, convict, of, of convicted New York drug dealer, Frank Lucas. Okay, so, and that's, that's the basic history of the brother. But in light of all of that, he found something that he can do to be successful. And even in being successful... Helping other people. What other record label? You don't. You don't get on Sony. You don't get on uh, some of these other major record labels. That once they artist is no longer with them, they don't give them nothing else. Why should Bad Boys give you something because you've worked with them? You know, you don't look at all these other record labels who don't do a damn thing for the artists that no, no longer work with them. They don't have no benefit packages for them. When half the artists die, they don't offer to pay for their funeral, funerals and all this other stuff. The, the lavish stuff that you see taking place at some of these funerals, that don't come from these record labels. It comes from sometimes brothers like Puffy with the heart. They don't have to do all that. If I die tonight, the company I work for ain't got to pay for my damn funeral. 
They really don't. And I'm sure they're not either. So it is what it is. It's my responsibility to make sure my people can lay me down. Not my record label uh, responsibility of associates or anything like that. But if you're, if you're, um, your, your label or your associates in your label decide to extend that sort of mercy and did it in, in gratitude to you, praise be to Allah. God, Moses, John, Jesus, whoever you believe in, man, whoever you believe in. So I'm about to end this, man. I want to talk you to death, family. I just really wanted to address this issue that's, that's it's ongoing now. And um, for those who are out there to really see this brother get taken out, man, man, ha I'm not even going to tell you to have a heart. Take it to your prayer rug if you even got a prayer rug. Take it to your God if there's a God in your heart to want to see another brother destroyed just because we are envious and jealous and don't like somebody, don't have a reason. Somebody you probably never even met, you don't like. So if you never even met brother and you don't like brother, what would be your reasons for not liking the brother? I mean, that, that that's just something that's an open-ended question, so to speak. But at the end of the day, we fast and pray a lot, God. And the one God we bear to, we bear witness to Master Farah Muhammad, who came in person, that the God continue to protect my brother and his family and he get through the trials that he get through and hold his head up. One thing I can say about Sean Puffy is that the brother has dignity, man, and he holds his head up in light of all the gossip, all the scandal, all the backbiting, the slack talk, and all the all that other stuff that the brother goes through. It seems to me he, he holds his head up and keeps his composure. Still in the business, still taking care of his family. May Allah continue to bless my brother and those who are listening. Just remember, family, we do what we do here out of love, brother. We're not doing here to be, I'm not here to be seen amongst men. I'm not trying to get accolades or anything like that, brother. I just, just was following this story for a minute. And then when this case hit with the sister who was once affiliated, associated with him, then all of a sudden now, you know, She's pulling whatever she's pulling to get whatever she obviously has got from him. It is what it is. But may this be a lesson a lesson to the young brothers and sisters that's in the game now. Be mindful and be careful. If you're a woman, don't put yourself in a position where you can be used like trash and just be manipulated and treated any way you want because somebody is giving you uh, uh, uh 30 pieces of silver or even a part of it, maybe 15 pieces of the 30 pieces of silver. And so because you may be riding in a nice car or you, he may allow you to eat at the finest dinery and all that. Don't sell your soul, black woman. Come to the God. Come to the mighty MGT class and GCC class and get trained up on how to handle yourself in certain, such, such, pardon me, certain situations and conditions that life put us in. Don't put yourself in a position, black woman, where you could be treated any way than 30 years later or 20 years later, you come out and holler, I was assaulted, I was raped, I was pressured, I was ill-treated. And now you get lawyers and say, who are we talking about? Oh, we're talking about Sean Puffy Cone. Oh, we can get something out of that. Yeah, we can get something out of that. And then they take the, they take it to their buddies in the court system who sit there wait for cases like this. Wait for cases like this. Same thing with the case. We should have learned from Michael Jackson's case. We should have learned from OJ case. And when I say we, I'm talking about brothers like Puffy and those who are dealing with that kind of stuff. You know, sometimes knowledge is, I mean, knowledge is power, period. But sometimes we have to just give to knowledge, man. And absorb it and to be cautious and careful. I fast and pray again once Almighty God Allah. He is uh, the compassion in our hearts for those who have compassion and love and respect and not um, not so much jealousy and envy and hatred to want to see our brother thrown under the bus and uh, want to see our brother crucified. We fast and pray that all that is under control and inshallah. Not only do the brother, the brother, because he will be successful and vindicated from the slander and the gossip, but he won't be put in a position where it is an onslaught coming at the brother now from the states. Because once they see a way out, 
is what they did. Mike, Michael Jackson settled at the first at the first case, and they didn't stop from there. So we fast and pray. This be the end, man. Lord, continue to bless you. Thank you for listening. I leave you as I came before you. Nation, greeting words of peace and paradise. Assalamualaikum. Original salute. Puffy, stay up, soldier. Peace.